Thanks for listening to Kentucky Sports Radio on Talk Radio 1080. All right, Jared, it's time that uh, I know we've been looking forward to this, and I know the fans are looking forward to knowing who our guest is on the show today, but it's a guy that uh, meant so much to not only my career, but your career and influenced uh, what college football is doing nowadays offensively, and the guy's Hal Mummy. So uh, yeah, I, what, what did it mean for you to play for Coach? Uh, well, Coach, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, he gave me my shot. I'm yeah. 19 years old, uh, was throwing the ball. I think I averaged 54 and a half throws a, a game. Um, the and, and that and then we talked about this a little bit off air. Everybody is running coach's system. Yeah, everybody runs a little bit of the air version right? of it. Yeah, it, sometimes somewhere somehow. But uh, so I'm I'm really excited to uh to get him on air and uh, absolutely grill him <laughs> as hard as we all can. the tough questions. All every we're single fired one of them. What about you? What about you, uh, Tim? To give me give me a give me a favorite memory of, of coach. Oh, you know he was just like uh, you know he's like a second father to me. He really is, and uh, you know we became so close. Uh, during that time, you know, he was making the transition from about Austin State to jumping right into the big time SEC. And, uh, you know, it was kind of like, you know, we're going to do this together type of thing. You know, people are doubting you because of your freshman year and yep. you didn't perform well. Or people are doubting me because of my system. They don't think it's going to work at this level. So it was kind of like, hey, we're going to show the world together type of thing. And we did it and we started something. And, uh, you know, very, very, uh, very happy we're able to do that together. But let, let's get coach on the line. Coach, you there? Yeah, I'm good. I, it's uh, fun to hear you guys together. I, I've, Still my favorite people, so I'm honored to be on the show. Well, we appreciate it, Coach. Hey, we're going to keep it real simple. No pressure, no tough questions today. So I'll start it <laughs> off by asking if you could take one of your former quarterbacks that you've ever coached and start a team, who would it be? <laughs> wow, but no, no pressure, no Coach. whatsoever. But, you know, I'd probably, I'd probably have to pick Dustin Dewall from Iowa West. Uh, I, told you, I told you he would go away. Oh, uh, I knew it. Uh, that's got, I, I was expecting a Chris Hatcher right there, Coach. I'm a little disappointed. Yeah, no, I can't, I can't pop Hatcher up that much. You know, his ego will get out. Hand, you know, that's so, very true. But, but, very but true. D-Wall, you know, D Wall, in fact, I'm going to plug it, our book there. There's a book called Stretch the Cornfield. It's all about Mike Leach and Dana Holgerson and myself and Mark Hill from UK yeah. there. But, uh-huh. uh, the little bitty school in Iowa where Dustin was the quarterback, and it's how we started playing fast and all that. They, they wanted to call it Stretch the Field, and I told them they probably should call it Stretch the Cornfield because we were stating was in the middle of the cornfield. <laughs> That's awesome. We'll have to check that book out for sure. Hey, Coach, kind of just, uh, if you don't mind, just kind of give everybody an update. You know, I know you're you're a head coach now, and um, yeah. you were at SMU last year? I was. That was the only year I haven't been a head coach in about 25 or so. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. I, I kind of felt like Jim Jones and I have been fast friends for a long time, and and uh, we always kind of talked about combining a lot of the run and shoot and, and what I did with the air raid. And, and so it was a lot of fun. We got to coach Garrett, Garrett Gilbert, who uh, mm-hmm. got drafted yeah. by the Rams here. And, and uh, it, it was, it was a, a whole bunch of fun. Garrett got hurt the last couple of games. So we didn't finish as hard as we, as we needed to. But, but uh, he, uh, he really had an outstanding season. And it was a lot of fun uh, learning some run and shoot stuff from Jim. Coach, you've had so many of your guys that uh, not only that you coach, but that coach under you in, in this system go on to be successful offensive coordinators, successful head coaches. How, how, how does that make you feel as just seeing those guys go out and, and take this offense and expand it and, and do the things that uh, you know that we were doing that, that, that you started at, at Kentucky and, and take it to another level? How happy does that make you to watch those guys go out and be successful? Oh, it's, it's really a lot of fun. I You know, turning on TV every Saturday now, watch, you know, I can – pick up somebody who's probably doing it and mm-hmm. you know i've been blessed with all the people like like you and jared that have been around me and and uh it's been you know my main deal is i just wanted everybody to have fun playing football and and uh those guys you know they were all they all added to the offense in some form or fashion and uh the uh i, I probably learned more from y'all than y'all did from me but it, it's been fun the whole time and uh kentucky was a blast uh, every game was like a rock concert, and, mm-hmm. as y'all well know. And uh, but every place I've been, I'm really excited about Bellhaven, where I'm at now, and, and uh, the challenge we have here. Going back a little bit, Coach, when you when you first got the job at Kentucky, coming from Valdosta State, 
Um, first of all, did you have any doubts that this system would work in a conference like the SEC? And, you know, back then the SEC was uh, very, very much a running conference. No one was really throwing the ball besides Spurrier down at Florida, but not to the extent that you were going to come in and do it at, at Kentucky. Did, did you ever have any doubts that uh, this system would be as successful at that level as it was uh, at the previous places you'd been? No, not really. I, I just I, well, first of all, I had you there to begin with. And, you know, <laughs> if you have a quarterback, it helps. And, and right. uh, it wasn't. It was pretty apparent to me when when Sam Newton came to talk to me about the job that that, that you would be the be the quarterback, and and that you know that always gives you a leg up anytime you take over a job. If you have to go recruit one and wait on him to grow up, it's harder. Obviously, having you there was was a a big plus, and then we, you know, we had enough skill guys to get the job done. You know, Kevin Coleman and James Whalen, and Craig Geese, Keo Sanford, and all those guys. And right. uh, we, you know, it was it was a lot of fun. And and uh, but I no, I never really doubted it. But I, I do think this. I, I think when we played that first game against Louisville in 1997, the only two people that thought we were going to win were you and me. <laughs> no, that, that's 100 percent true, right there. You know, I think. Yeah. Uh, you know, going through that whole off season, uh, or you know, during the uh, summer yeah. camp and all that kind of or fall camp, you know, everyone was uh, you know kind of looking around like, man, you know, we're going to go out and throw it fifty times a game. You know, we're going to play Louisville in the opening game, and it's, there's no way it's going to work. But Hal and I, uh, you know, kind of like I said when I introduced him, we were kind of like, hey, this is us. We're going to do this together, and we're going to make this thing work. And coach, I remember the opening drive of that game. It, we went down the field, and it was uh, you know, boom, 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 and I hit Lance Mickelson in a corner uh, yeah. for a touchdown, and it was just like everybody kind of looked around. The players on the sidelines kind of started looking around the fans were kind of like oh my god this thing is awesome you know and, and then from yeah. then on it was just you know it was just an offensive explosion so that, that was definitely yeah. a good way to get it started no it was and i put you in a hard position because i i kind of declared who the starter was before we even practiced and well i appreciate Billy that jack coach. was a great guy but <laughs> he didn't you know i kind of wanted him to play slot receiver for us and mm-hmm. and uh, he'd been an option quarterback mainly and i knew you would you know but it, it was hard because he was a senior and kind of a favorite son and Right, and uh, so I put you in a hard position. So I, I think, you know, you had to endure a pretty tough off season and a pretty tough spring, and everybody's kind of, you know, they wanted us to win, but they weren't sure it would work. So I just, I just remember after about when it got to be twenty-one to nothing or something, and you'd thrown about three touchdown passes, you became a real popular guy on the sidelines. All the <laughs> Amazing time. how that works out, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but I think we we created some believers there pretty quick, but. Uh, you know, it, it, it was it was a fun time, but it was also kind of a trying time in in, uh, in that respect because there was all of a sudden all this this attention that that you know you know you don't, I really wasn't used to in in right. you know, head coach in small college you don't get a lot of that but but uh, but it was fine. No, but as far as doubting the system or knowing it would work, no, I never, yeah, the guy that really deserves a lot of praise and 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 uh, and and. Being a lot of vision is Sam Newton. I mean, he, yes. yep. you know, he had enough courage to come down to Valdosta and, and bring me there, and and uh, didn't care what the naysayers said. And believe me, there were a lot of them at his door. And yeah, no, I, I definitely uh, he, agree with he that. He deserves a tremendous amount of credit for kind of having this vision of basketball on grass. And and uh, I just happened to be the guy that was fortunate enough that he caught his attention. Well, Jared and I were fortunate that he uh, yeah. that you caught his yeah, attention so, as so well. So, coach, I got to thank CM now too. All right, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> no, coach, like uh, Jared was a lot of fun too. I went. Oh, there. oh I yeah, unpo- yeah. Of my Sorry about that, coach. <laughs> finish coaching him because right. he was uh, he was. We had a huge I, I, Jared. I don't. You probably remember this, but we're playing Florida down there in the swamp when you're, you know, your first season to start. Yep. Yep. And and. And uh, I always tried to loosen you up a little bit at the beginning. Yeah, you of the did. Game. <laughs> yeah, you did. And so we we had scripted all these. We were going to go for it on fourth down like five times that day, and we'd scripted all these fourth down plays. And it was a fourth down around midfield, and and I knew what we were going to call already. But I called timeout and called you over there, and I told you, look at that girl above section two fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I, I said, I said, look, and you were you kind of loosened up and started laughing, and and then. Uh, Tony Franklin came running in the 
in the little huddle there, and he thought I said curl, not girl. Uh. <laughs> and, so he tried, you remember that? He started screaming. Yes. I can't tell the girl. It's not always scripted. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, no, awesome. it, you know what, though? And that's what it, that, that's something that happened a lot. I mean, he really did because he knew I was a freshman, and I was freaking out because I'm playing in the swamp or I'm playing at LSU or I'm playing wherever. And, and Coach, man, i got to give you all the credit, man. It was, uh, dude, relax. Hang out. Yeah. And, and, that, and that, you know what? That kind of segues me into this, Coach. And I get this asked all the time, the pregame music when we played. It's all about, Jimmy Buffett. It's all about relaxation. Oh, is that, right, is that all about relaxation? Uh, yo, well, it is for me. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> See, I, was, I always thought it was more important that I'd be relaxed. I think some of the guys didn't necessarily like the choice of music, but, but uh, it helped we grew me to, We grew to love it. Oh, Coach, I'm a Buffett fan yeah. because of you. Yes, well, I am good. too. I, you know, I, you know I, we've created a lot of parrot heads through the years. And yeah. Between Mike Leach and I, there's, there's a lot of people go to Key West now because of that. So. That's right. I, I, I was down there about three weeks ago, and we went to uh, – we got uh, the guy that the guy that uh, the the song "Gypsies in the Palace." There's a guy named Snake in the in the song. It's all about these guys that house sit for Buffett and kind of turn his turn his house into a den of sin. And uh, anyway, Snake runs his recording studio now. So every time I go down there, I get to take people on guided tours of Buffett's recording studio. Awesome. And uh, it, it's really cool. No, but it's, hit, it's hidden in plain sight in the in the middle of the harbor down there at Key West. So oh, that's really cool. So that story that story you told about Jared and and the girl in the in the crowd reminded me of a story, Coach. We were playing at LSU, a game that we won on the road in Baton Rouge, a oh, night game. The, that, the, the, the reverse, the reverse on, on the, third the, and two. Yeah, I think Coach, it was probably your best call at, at Kentucky. The reverse to Quentin McCord to, to set us up for a field goal. But before the game, we're in the locker room, and all week long, the talk had been LSU's coach Jerry Donardo had kind of said was kind of making fun of us, you know, saying we're a gimmick team yeah. and how with the towel around his neck and the, and the shades on and the Jimmy Buffett that we didn't take this league serious enough so we're in the locker room before the game and Hal and I are sitting there talking like we always do going over the game plan and the script of the first 15 or whatever it was and all of a sudden Hal looks over at one of the equipment managers he said here's what I want you to do go up to the to the concession stand and get me a hot dog and I want you to load it up with ketchup mustard pickles <laughs> onions everything you can put on that hot dog put it on there and bring it down here to me and this is before pregame warm-ups so I go, I go, coach. What the heck are you doing? He said, he said, Jerry doesn't think I take this game serious enough. Serious enough. So I'm gonna walk out and meet him at midfield eating a hot dog. <laughs> so, so sure enough, we go out for warm ups, and I'm over there, and I'm, I'm just crying. I'm laughing so hard, and I'm trying to warm up, and I'm peeking over my shoulder watching coach. And you could hold on, hold on. He actually got the hot dog. Oh yeah. So he, you could see, and he's out there at midfield with the towel around his neck and the, eating this hot dog and talking to Donardo, and you could see the steam coming off his head. <laughs> and then we go on and beat him, which was the icing on the cake, man. So I know you remember that story, coach. Oh yeah, it was a lot of fun. In fact, the, the guy that brought me the hot dog was Jeff Allen. He's now the trainer at uh. At at Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think he gets to bring many hot dogs to the to Nick. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think <laughs> Saban does that. Yeah, yeah. Coach, I have a feeling yeah, Nick ain't Jeff like that. I love telling that story on me. But, it, yeah, we you know we just had fun with it. We were going to have fun with it. No matter everywhere I've been, we just tried to have fun with it. And then and, and you guys were – y'all were a blast. I mean, it was, y'all, there was a lot of uh, – there was a lot of props there to play with with all you guys. So it was pretty easy to do. But, you know, the guy who does I want to say this because cause he passed on us last year was uh, John. You know, Jonas is the guy called that play. Oh, is remember. that right? Yeah. Yeah. Because we called, I called timeout, and you and I were standing there talking about whether we should throw wide sale or, or just run the ball again. And uh, and Jonas came over to me. He, and, and, you know, Jonas, he never said anything. No. <laughs> He came over and he goes, Coach, that guy comes inside every time we hand the ball off. He said, if you're on the reverse, it'll work. I remember looking at him going, yeah, that's a really good idea. That. <laughs> that sounds great. That's great, and I'm going to yeah. take the credit. Yeah. yeah. Well, it sounded real good at the time to say we had it all scripted and all that, but none of that was really true. No, I'll <laughs> tell you what, man. I, I remember uh, I was watching that game and was like, oh, man, we're going to overtime, and I couldn't believe the uh, – the we'll call it guts. Uh, yeah, on that play, that was uh, that was awesome, Coach man. Yeah, lot, no, lot, was, lots of memories. No, uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, all those guys, all you guys were were fun. Everybody there was fun, and, and uh, I've been blessed. It's it's. The, I think the thing I identify the most with Buffett is if you go to a Buffett concert, about halfway through it, all the time he comes out and thanks the crowd for his thirty year summer job. <laughs> All you have to do is wear shorts, flip flops, and a t-shirt. So not a bad I kind of gig. Felt the same way about coaching, you know. I just 
get to do this every day and be around all you players and all the people that support it, and it's, it's just so much fun. Well, Coach, we, we I know you're busy. I know you got a tea time today or practice or something going on. <laughs> we, we we really appreciate you, Coach. And Jared and I just uh, can't thank you enough, not only for coming on the show, but how much you meant to our careers and so many other guys' careers along the way <laughs> that went into coaching and went into the NFL, whatever it was. But you're much appreciated here in Kentucky, Coach. And, and, wow. and, very, and very much for being – I mean, I know Tim said it earlier. I mean, you're a father figure to hundreds of thousands of people, so – it was. Uh, we were really, really excited that you came on. We both got to do this together and talk to you both. So it was. Uh, I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, thank you all. I appreciate it much. And I, you know, I hope the fans enjoyed some of the stories there. And and uh, y'all come see us. I, I've got a radio show starting in August, so I'm going to have both y'all on there. Okay, that'd be great. Anytime, give us a call, coach. All right. Thanks, all right. Guys. We'll talk to you soon. Thank Bye-bye. you.